Hello everyone, welcome to Outdoor School of Thought. We're back with another episode that I've been wanting to do for a long time. We're actually doing a Camp Catch and Cook episode off the coast of Northern California. And although conditions weren't ideal, it rained for most of the three days, it didn't stop us from doing a bit of intertidal foraging. (laughs) This camping trip was actually very special because I was able to bring my friends and family together. Many of them wanted to learn how to poke pole based on the videos that I've been putting out. I'm glad that I'm starting to get more people excited about going into the outdoors. (laughs) But I'm also excited that people are starting to appreciate what it takes to bring your food from the sea to your plate more. Yeah, the presentation's a lot better. Yeah, that way you're just not. So there's so much stuff out here. So we caught a crab, we caught eel, uh, we caught a small rock, we caught a few bits, a bunch of mussels, a bunch of booty. We got a whole bucket of booty. Our bucket is full to the brim. And, uh, and uh, I think that's it. Things are looking pretty good for us. We got Lawrence over here with this improvised poke pole. That's right. right. Lawrence, somehow, he is, he is hidden it hard as it is. So he got two feet on his thing. Stick that I tied a, uh, what is it, a, a rig to. And I'm about to go catch a monkey face too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should bring the bucket over here. Okay. Oh, yes! It's a really cool crab. Oop. Goodbye. So, no matter how many times I go poke pulling, it's always good to be very self reflective. Oh. I'm always trying to remember some of my victories and some of my lessons that I had to learn. On this day, it was important to find pools that were about six to 10 inches deep. It was also important to find smooth surfaced rocks that were overlapping that create sort of small caves that eels could hide under. We also realized that if you catch one eel in a particular place, it's just good to keep pulling that same area because there might be other eels in in the surrounding pockets. Being mindful about bait presentation will reduce the amount of time it takes to catch an eel. You want to make sure that you're suspending your bait maybe one to two inches off the ground so that you can have a higher hook set ratio. Yeah, I got one. Nice! Oh, you gotta kill it? I don't want to. Yeah. Come on. You can release it. If you want. No. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna go back Put it in the bucket. Elton's on the boards! Oh shit. Badass sea urchin. Look, it's dark. Oh my god. Oh, that's a red sea urchin. Get it. Yeah! <laughs> Just like that, baby. Just like that. Whoa, this one's cool, man. Yeah, they generally have a higher yield than the purple urchin. You got a dude. <laughs> yeah! Dang, that's huge. Look at that. Oh my god! Oh 
<laughs> I like it when you call me Big Papa. This is like shit. See the sushi market. Just when we thought we could leave, the uni taunt us with bigger and bigger hatches. So, forge we must. Ellen, your thoughts on the day? Oh man, we killed it. We just killed it. Look at this thing. This is the, the final touch of our trip, <laughs> or at least our Saturday. It's this big guy. I don't know, usually I've seen people catch these, but they die for them. It's freehand. Boy. We got all these in here. I can't believe we found so many red ones this close to shore. Usually they're out farther. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, yeah. go ahead. It's light. Because they were moving a little bit after I smashed his head. Heavy. Where? But this is so pretty. It's going to mess it up. Like yeah. car carcasses on carcasses. Oh man, that's this actual scallop. Are these things dead? No, not yet. How come there's only They're one scallop? For sure. <laughs> oh, fish show. So, hello everyone. This is Outdoor School of Thought. We're out here. We're <laughs> School of Thought. We're a uh, <laughs> squad. Squad, super okay, deep. Uh, uh, uh. Everybody was out there poke pulling. We were foraging for mussels, sea urchins. Crab. We picked up a scallop of crab along the way. Picked up and now chicken. we got people over <laughs> here uh, getting in. eels. We got Vivian What's over that? here trying to skin this <laughs> eel for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> and we're preparing all this for fish tacos. We just right, butchered a chicken. The, uh, Argentinian <laughs> open fire. <laughs> wow. Wait. Wait. <laughs> Wait. That's gonna take forever to. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that's gonna take forever to cook. Oh well. Oh well, you guys. Slow roast baby. It's that, <laughs> it's that Kirkman Man. chicken. Man, we're gonna <laughs> wait. <laughs> Are we playing a fucking tetherball with that? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that shit. <laughs> I'm Rod <riding> Spooners. I'm Rod Spooners. Look at that. Did you eat a No, this is for you. This is for you. No, go for it. Eat it. Go for it. He's filming. Oh, and the, the water. They get over there. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's hella good. Okay, all right, who's next? Are we trying? Hold on, let me get this. Make me one. What? Make me one. Hold on, I'm taking Damn, that was probably the best thing, actually. I think it's, damn, that, that kind of topped the uni. Ah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> they're, both, they're both good, but different. They're both pretty good. That was scrumptious. Damn. Oh, damn. Mark, it's super sweet. Um, mm. So we're here on day two of our camping trip, MLK weekend. Cooking up morning breakfast. After last night we had this major feast of seafood. Now it's all about the meats. Yes, we do. Yeah. We got these socks cooking over the fire. We got these meatballs cooking over the fire. Potatoes would just take over. Call potato point. Oh, potato gold. Hmm. Mmm. The rosemary. Fire. Mmm. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. So good, right? <laughs> Synagogue. This is like the illest, like my favorite food. Pork ribs. Um, onion, garlic, tomato. Uh, jalapeno, mad uh, tamarind soup mix, uh, the 
this. Um, it's daikon radish, these are long beans, and that's uh, spinach. And then after spinach gets added, it's pretty much done. So. I want to make sure like the uh, the meat is mad like tender and fall off the bone, and I want like the the cartilage to be like soft enough to eat. So you know. Who's eating this one? Mark. I will. <laughs> bone cartilage both. Both. After we ate lunch, a couple people packed up and headed back home. The rest of us had to stay in our tents because it rained for the rest of the day and all night. So this concludes Camp Catch and Cook Days 1 and 2. Stay tuned for Catch and Cook Day 3 coming next. Oh boy. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And hit the notification bell if you'd like to be notified whenever new episodes get released.